All right. What's good, Will Squad? I'm just re-going over this intro to the strat. So we're going to talk about what is the strat. I'm not even going to go through the trade breakdown. Well, actually, I might because it, it might still help. All right. So um, here's the disclaimer. Um, keep it pushing. Um, so what is the strat? All right. So I'm not even going to read on the strat is a strategy made by Rob Smith, all right? And it's basically going off, off of pure price action, all right? To me, it gives you a simple way of trading without having all those indicators on your screen. It gives you entries and targets, all right? It is basically trading price action. It requires patience and discipline with tight stop losses, all right? You trade using the three universal truths. The three universal truths are time frame continuity, which you're, uh, there's two different time frames people look at. And then some people customize their own, but the two main ones are you look at the monthly, the weekly, the daily, and the one hour. All right. That's for your swing trading, basically. For your day trading, intraday, basically, you are looking at your daily your one hour, your 30 minute, and your 15 minute. Because essentially the hour is always in control and I will get more into that later on, all right? So use time frame continuity, actionable signals, and broadening formations, all right? And there's a separate video that goes more in depth into broadening formations, all right? So the strat is based on trading what you see and relying on quantifiable data. We're not anticipating, we're not hoping, we're not guessing. We're waiting for particular setups based off of broad information, time frame continuity, as well as there's a whole strat cheat sheet on the uh, different uh, candlestick patterns that we look for. And it shows you where your entry is, where your target is, and things of that nature, all right? Boom. So the scenarios, there are three, only three scenarios that a candlestick can do in the strat. The first one is a um, scenario one or an inside bar. This candlestick doesn't break either side of the previous candlestick. It is a consolidation. It is what everybody hates to trade. They be like, oh, the, the stock just moving sideways. If you look um. Down, if you take a one on a higher time frame, like the, the daily or like the one hour, you scroll down to a lower time frame. So if you're on the daily, you scroll down to an hour. You would basically, if you mark the high and low of that one, you will see that it's just basically stuck in that range. Same thing if you looked at it on the hour. If you scroll down from the hour to like the 15 minute, you'll see that it's just stuck in that range. All right. So let me annotate on here. So it doesn't break the high or the low of the previous candlestick and that's why this is a one this candlestick didn't break above the high of this candlestick or the low of it it's basically inside of it all right that's why we call it a inside bar all right so let me clear clear my drawings x out of that let me go into the next one all right so consolidation inside basically it's the same thing like if my hand was this this would be a one side one bar it is inside of my hand it is a consolidation it's not going anywhere it's stuck in that range all right so, um the second scenario it is a scenario two it is directional it breaks only one side of a candlestick so only one either it's either going to break the high or the low of a candlestick if it breaks the high it is a two up it doesn't matter what color it is it is a two up all right now, if it breaks above it and it's a red candlestick, like you can see with this, um, with this one, this is technically a red candlestick, but on trading view, my script painted it green. It painted the body green, but this is technically a conflicting, what I would call a conflicting tool. Why is it conflicting tool to me? Because it's actually a red candlestick. And as you can see, the next candlestick, it went red, but I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself. But all you need to basically know is, you know, it's about the direction it broke in, whether it's a red candle or a green candle. It can be a red candle break up. It's still a two up. 
all right? It can be a green candle and still break down. It's still a two down, all right? But as you can see, this is a two up. Why? Because it broke above the previous candle. This candle broke above this candle, all right? So it's two up. It is directional. It is going in a direction. That direction, that direction is up, all right? It broke the high of the previous candle is going up, all right? So let me clear this, all right? This is a two down right here. Why is it a two down? Because it broke below the previous candlestick. This is the previous candlestick, all right? That's what makes this candlestick right here, this red one, a two down. It broke the low. That signals that it is a two down. All right, let me clear my drawing. Boom. All right, going to the next one. A three, last but not least, it is a, a scenario three is a candle which breaks both sides of the previous range. So it breaks both sides of the previous candle. It starts as a two in one direction and fills and goes three. All right, so as you can see, let me annotate. This candlestick right here, that's mark three. This is a three candlestick. Why? Because it broke the high and the low of a previous candlestick. All right, which this was kind of bad. I drew it bad, but essentially it broke above it. All right. So it poked above it barely, failed, and went down. All right. That is a three candlestick. It's basically an engulfing candlestick. It engulfs the previous candlestick, all right? It takes out the high and it takes out the low. That on a smaller time frame is your broadening formation, all right? That is a broadening formation on a lower time frame. And like I said, I have a whole video in the Well Squad on broadening formation, all right? So I won't touch on it too much because that's a separate video. And it also saves this video from being too long, all right? So that's your three. So we talked about the one, that's your consolidation candle, all right? It's gonna be inside of the previous candle, just like my fist is inside of my hand. A two is a directional candle. If it breaks the high, it is directional to the upside. It is a two up. If it breaks the low, it is a two down, all right? No matter what color it is, it is a two up. If it breaks up, even if it's red, if it's, a, it's still a two down, if it breaks below and it's green, all right? Those are what I call conflicting. Why? It's because it may be two up, but it's red. It's conflicting. And as you can see right here, it ends up going two down. All right. And the same thing could be said in the opposite. Does it always work out that way? No, but it kind of gives you an idea. All right. So let me keep going. Broadening formation. Broadening formation is basically how price discovery works. Price aggregates because we know that there must be a buyer for every seller. The main difference is, are they hitting the bid or are they taking the offer or ask, all right? Most trading is done by computer algos, which is why we talk about the hour flip. What is the hour flip? When one hour candle closes and a new one opens, that is the hour flip. That next candle will either negate the previous candle or it will, um, it will basically, um, oh, it will either continue, it's another word I was looking for, it will either continue or it will be an inside bar, all right? So it will either negate or it will reaffirm the previous candle, all right? But basically, that's why we talk about the hour flip. It's just basically a new candle. If we say 30-minute flip, we're looking for the 30-minute flip. That means a new 30-minute candle is about to happen. So that's what that means. It's just saying a new candle is about to appear. All right, and anything can happen in that new candle, okay? So basically, even though I broke it down in another video, I'll just go over a little bit. All the broad information is, is price taking out one range and coming back through and taking out another range, all right? So let me annotate, all right? So as you can see, this came price came up right here and it took out basically this pivot, if I drew this, all the way across, it took out that pivot, all right? So it didn't go all the way out and take, up, take out and make new highs. It just took out a few pivots 
came down a little bit, came back up some more and took out another pivot, all right? And then what it likes to do is take out a few pivots and then it'll come down and take out some pivots to the downside. That's how price likes to move. And as you can see from here to here, it is outside of all these candlesticks. And that's why we say uh, broadening from uh, a three on a lower time frame is a broad information. I know that looks ugly, but basically the high, and I'll mark this one. Oh, let me clear it. This high of this candlestick and this low is outside of most of these candlesticks over here. That's a broad information. That's basically what a three does. It takes out one side, like Rob would say, um, they like this um, buy up and then sell down. Basically, it takes out a few pivots, comes in the other direction, take out some pivots to the downside. That's what price likes to do. It likes to go up and down. It likes to aggregate, almost like a heartbeat um, monitor. You'll see it pulse up a little bit, then boom, boom, then pulsing, uh, pulsing side a little bit, and then uh, go up and down some more. That's what price likes to do. So what you'll notice is when you see us marking pivots on our um, on our charts, that's what we're saying. We're saying, okay, this is a target. This is a target. Oh, that's ugly. Let me clear all this, clear our drawing. We're saying this is a target. This is a target. This is a target because while we know people who are going short, they set their pivots, um, their stop loss at the top of candles, we'll say this is a target. All right. And then if, if price breaks through, let's say price breaks through some of these, like this one did, it didn't break through all these to the upside. It broke through some of them and then it goes to the downside and then it takes out some of the pivots to the downside. Like if I was marking it here, 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 price will break through there. And then eventually it stops. It took out this last pivot down here. It doesn't always take out the last pivot, as you can see, to the upside. It didn't take out every pivot. It took out a pivot to the downside, bounced up, which is why we draw our support and resistance diagonally instead of horizontally. All right. This is why we know price likes to take out a previous high or previous low, and then it may return to the upside or it may keep going. That's why we don't play continuations. That's why we like to play the reversals. All right. And as you can see right here, this was a 212 reversal. All right. So I hope that makes sense as far as this broad information. Like I said, in another video, I really, really went in depth with it because I don't want to make this too long. But ultimately, it's just getting your eyes used to seeing price doing this then coming down. Then it might it might not take out this high up here. It might just stop right here and then go down and it might take this one out this time and then return to the top. It might go ahead and take it out, come back to the bottom. It might not go all the way down. It might come up, it might trade inside of a range, create a one, one bar on a higher time frame. We never know. We're not guessing. We're just taking what the market gives us, all right? So let me clear all my drawings. X out that, go to the next one. So how do you find broad information? Scenario threes are broad informations on a lower time frame, as well as a compound three. What is a compound three? Two candlesticks put together. If you put a, a two up and a two down together, that is a um, a compound three. You combine them together, compound, all right? How do you draw your broad informations? You draw your broad information by drawing back from the current high to a previous high, from a current low to the previous low. And as you can see right here, I drew from this current high to a previous high, and I drew from this low to a previous low. Because as you can see, to this bottom broad information was still good, all right? But as, like I said before, price doesn't always come out and create a new high. Sometimes it might just take a couple of pivots out and then return to the downside. But these two together, let me annotate, these two together are your broad information, all right? I'm gonna go on because like I said, I got a separate video on that. Um, time frame continuity. Time frame continuity is basically looking at different participation groups and seeing if they agree. Your month, some people buy stocks by the month. Some people buy by the week. And if they buy by the week, they may take profit on Friday. Some people buy by day, day traders. Some people buy by the hour, scalpers and stuff like that. So we're identifying 
these uh, participation group, groups by time frames and stuff like that. All right. Like I said, the main time frames is monthly, weekly, daily, one hour, 60 minute, whichever way you want to look at it. And then, as I said at the beginning of the video, the intraday time frames is your one hour, 60 slash 30 minute, 15 and five, which is actually your day, daily, one hour, 30 minute, 15. But some people like to use the one hour, 30, 15 minute, five after they already looked at the day. All right. So for me, I use the script on TradingView brought by Board Rider B called Time Frame Continuity. Those resources and everything is in Market Facts and Resources uh, Storehouse. All right. Actionable signals. What are actionable signals? Your actionable signals are your hammer, your shooter, your Momo hammer, your Momo shooter. Also, inside bars are your actionable signals. Signals. All right. Um. We do. I went over this in another video, um, so I won't go too much more into it on this video. But you typically don't want to trade inside bars. Why? Because it's a consolidation. It's a tight range. But sometimes your inside bars can be thirty to thirty dollar a thirty um dollar range. With options, we can trade that. But like I said, I went over that in a separate video. This is just a refresher, um, of the intro. All right. So an example right here. As you can see, this is a shooter, all right? So what would our entry be? What would our entry be? The entry is right here. What is our target to take out? The bottom of this candle. And as you can see, it went through there and then it poked back up and it's like doing an inside bar over here. This is why we just, a lot of times when you're starting off, just take your entry, place your first target. And if it breaks that, just go ahead and take profit until you get used to knowing what you are doing, all right? But this is a shooter. This is how you um, this is how you would play it. All right. So that's how you would play the shooter. The entry is the bottom of it. The target is to take out a previous candle uh, low. Boom. Takes it out, pokes back up. If you um um sold and took profit right when it broke through, boom, you good. All right. Because the object of the game is to protect your um protect your profit. All right. Protect your account, protect your profit. The hammer. All right. The hammer. Your entry is the top of the hammer, all right, right here. So as soon as it breaks above it, boom, you're in it. Your target to take out is the top of this candlestick, this pivot right here. Why? Because we know people who are going short, they set their stop loss up here, all right? So when it breaks above it, it turns whoever was short here, it turns them into buyers because now they have to cover their position. And as you can see, with a 212 continuation, it takes out the top of this pivot. You take your um, profit right there as soon as it break above, boom. All right. Clear all drawings. Exit. Go to the next. Your two, one, two. All right. Your one, your inside bar, remember that is an actionable signal. That is a pattern. Of, you're going to see a lot of patterns in the um, strat cheat sheet that have a one in. You got your two, one, two. You got your 212 continuation, your 212 reversal, which right here is a continuation. You got your 213, you got your uh, 312. The ones are your actionable signal. The top of the ones or the bottom of it, like when you're looking at a chart before this happens and you scan for you scan for an inside bar on like think or swim, you will mark the top and the bottom and whichever direction you're breaking, that's what you're taking. And your target would be the top or the bottom of the candle. So in this instance, it was a 212 continuation. It broke above it. Boom, your target is here. And if there were some more targets over here, um, you could have marked them up and, and kept trying to go up with it. But ultimately, when you're starting off, if you don't know what you're doing, just take profit once you break above that pivot because that's your magnitude, all right? Your magnitude and pivot is the same thing, all right? So let me clear, clear all my drawings. Exit. Uh, boom. And like I said, on the strat cheat sheet, when you see it, it's basically that your entry is going to be the one. Or if it's bullish, it's going to be the top of the candle, your entry. If it's bearish, it's going to be the bottom. All right. And it's just getting used to seeing it. And once you see it on the chart, you will be, be able to understand how to mark it up just the way it does it on the cheat sheet. Mark your pivots. All right. As well as just find a couple uh, patterns that you like. If you like the two one two reversals, 
play only the two one two reverses. If you like the three one two as well, play the two one two and the three one two. Or if you like the two one two and you like the two down two up reversal, you can. That's how you can play it. Or maybe you like looking for the two one twos and the shooters. All right, it's up to you, but narrow it down so you're not jumping all over the place. Stick to a couple patterns and um, uh, stay on them and trade them. And then once you master them, then you can move on. You don't want to be like analysis paralysis. You got 20 different things you can play. Um, you can just stick to a favorite setup, all right? So here, this this actually ever since this um, presentation, there's actually been a newer one. You'll see the newer one in uh, Market Facts and Resources Storehouse. But like I said, the best way to play is when you start is just playing reverses. So you got your... 2-2 two, two reversal, all right? I like playing the 2-2s two in either direction, especially if it's like a shooter or a hammer, which we saw a shooter. Um, bearish reversal, this was a shooter on um, one of the examples. And then, like I said, the, the entry was the bottom of it. As you can see, it gives you your target. Entry, target, entry, you know what I'm saying? And you can just find your target somewhere else. Like, And this is the pivot machine gun right here. It's, as you can see, the pivots where they're marked are so close together, it blows through them, creating a big candlestick. All right, that's why we like looking at pivot machine guns, okay? So the highest probability occurs when there's full-time frame continuity. Sometimes you won't have full-time frame continuity. Sometimes your month will be an inside month, but you'll have a signal on your weekly and on your daily. You can take that, all right? And I explain that in another video. Sometimes when you have full-time frame continuity, you run into exhaustion risk. Um, there's a video in Market Facts and Resources on exhaustion risk, but you have to be wary of that. You have to be aware how close is it to all-time highs, as well as if it is close to all-time highs and you think it's still very bullish, go check and see what the analyst price target is. Was there an upgrade? Was it a downgrade? So you can also be sure of other factors that, okay, maybe this got a price target upgrade. Upgrade, it might keep going. You don't know, but there is exhaustion risk when you get to those all-time highs, especially if you just keep going up and up and up. Eventually, there's going to have to be a, some corrective action, all right? There's going to have to be some pull, a pullback or anything or something like that, all right? And then trade review, all right? So here's um, a trade I did a while back um, in Well Squad. I was looking at Walmart. It was doing a 3-1 on the day, as well as it did a green two down on the hour to end the day, right? A green two down, a conflicting two down. It broke basically below the low of a previous candle on the, on the lower time frame. So it was a two down, but it was green. And that's why I say conflicting because it was green instead of red, all right? So my entry was above the one I was shooting for just 20%. It did that plus more, but I took my profit at 20% and moved on. I selected my trade by picking at the money contract no more than three strikes from being in the money. This works well with the strat. It works well when you're doing a day trade. If you're doing a swing trade, if you want to pick the strike price that you think it will hit, like let's say you have um four, three pivots, right? I would pick the, my strike price at the pivot in the middle. I wouldn't do it all the way at the far because I would love for it to get way, like get a couple spots in the money. So if it does hit that last target, now it's a couple spots in the money, all right? So you don't have to pick at the money when you're swinging. You can pick if you got a couple pivots, price targets that you think it will hit, which is pivots. Um, You can pick what that middle uh, pivot would be. You can pick the closest strike to that. That way, if it hits your last pivot, your third price target, then that way it might be one or two slots in the money, all right? So let me clear my drawings, exit out of that. So my entry was above the one, all right? It did a three reversal, one bar reversal, one, and then it was a three, one, two continuation, all right? So this is the look of it on the one hour, the two down, two up reversal. So my, um, my strat helper paints my candlestick red, but it was technically green, all right? And so once it broke above it, I was in that trade. All right, and then that was my first price target. And as you can see, it went up some, kind of traded sideways, and then went up a little bit more, all right? So 
I had an actionable signal on what the daily and the one hour. On the daily, it was a three one two. On the one hour, it was a two down, two up reversal. Okay. So when you have an actionable signal on two time frames, that is great. All right. So in this case, it was the and it's the higher the time frame, the better. So if you got actionable signal on your weekly and your daily, that's going to be powerful. And in this case, it was powerful because it was the daily and the one hour. An actionable signal on the one hour and the 15 might not be all that. All right. So the higher the time frame, the, the stronger the trade. OK, when it comes to actionable signals. And then this is what the 15 minute looked like. Even the 15 minute had a two down, two up reversal. And as you can see, it just kept going up before going to the sideways. All right. And I found my trades for the strat by scanning for setups through TOS scanners um, for the strat. Those are all in market um, market resources storehouse. All right. In the Google Doc. So review. This was a simple trade, uh, simple breakdown of my trading strategy um, and a trade that I alerted to the group. I'll be going over more of the strategy. Like I said, I just put out a few more videos. So this is gonna be like the third video today. I just wanted to isolate this and go over it itself by itself so it can be more condensed and people don't have to worry about it. And hopefully this time I went slower and I explained it, all right? So all those resources will be and um, the other videos that will help you along with this video are in Market Resources Storehouse. If you have any questions, DM me. All right. I'm Ray the Strat Uchiha in the Well Squad. Just DM me. Don't feel like you can't talk to me or whatever it is. You think I got a lot of questions. Just If you have something to ask me, go ahead and ask me. And I may make a whole video for it for you. I want you all to get this. This strategy is powerful. Also, we all can speak the same language. We can see what everybody else see. It's not confusing. So that way we can talk and communicate with each other. This is a team game, all right? When two people can look at different charts and know what the, what the other chart is doing just by a couple words and being able to communicate quick, we can hop into these trades together and take the best of the best, okay? All right? I want us to be successful together. Like I said, the creator is Rob Smith. You can find him at Rob in the Blacks, um, Rob in the Black on Twitter. All right. Tell him I sent you. All right. So, like I said, you need any other videos, let me know. Again, three scenarios. Your one, consolidation. All right. Inside. Your two is directional to the upside or to the downside. All right. It'll be a two up, no matter the color, or a two down. All right. Your three is basically your engulfing candle. It takes out it goes in one direction, fails, and comes back through a previous range, which can create a broad information on a lower time frame. All right. And then you have your compound threes, your two up, two down. Put those two together, that makes a three if it and then engulfs a previous range. All right. Especially on a higher time frame like the daily, the weekly, your monthly. All right. Understand that. And like I said, um, the more questions y'all ask, the more videos I will flesh out. Um, I'm so glad that we're on this journey together. Let's get this bread. All right.